heresy. Yes, I'm about to commit heresy because I'm going to explain to you why it doesn't matter what the breaking strength of your knot is. It just doesn't. Interested? Stay tuned. Uh-oh, I think I hear an irate mob running down the street. And they probably have flaming torches ready to string me up for what I just said. But yes, it doesn't matter what knot you tie. And let me show you exactly why. There are plenty of studies out there that talk about the breaking strength of various knots. And the answers are all going to be, you know, different because the lab environments where those are conducted are probably a little bit different as well. In reality, you know, the knot breaking point is going to depend on where it's employed. You know, if you're dragging your knot across the bottom all the time, it's going to experience more stress than one that pulls a crankbait smoothly through the water. So let's look at one study that I found, and I apologize, I can't remember who actually did this, but here are the breaking strengths of four popular knots starting with the trilene and going down to the clinch. And you can see here that the trilene rates the highest at 82%, and for 20-pound tests, it's going to break at around 16 pounds. Palomar is next at 81, and I've seen studies that say that the Palomar breaks at 95, but most studies all agree that the clinch is the weakest knot you can possibly tie. But even at 20 pounds, it's not going to break until about 14 pounds. So the first thing to recognize is that if you don't know how to tie a good trilene knot, its breaking strength is prob probably going to be a lot less than if you can tie a clinch knot down here with quality. And so that's the first point here. The best knot for you is the one that you can tie with quality that you know it's going to be nice and tight and it's going to hold well. So what if that's the clinch knot? You know, I like the clinch knot because I can tie it very quickly. So for example, I'll just do it right here. And my trick, and I'll link up this video as well, is that I like to use a pair of forceps to tie knots. And now time this. Done. So that is a nice, tight, high quality clinch knot. I know that's going to hold and I know it's not going to slip. So if I'm willing to settle for a knot at 69% breaking strength, well, how do I increase my odds that the knot isn't going to break if I get a real good fish on? Well, the first thing is to recognize that your rod, the power and the action of your rod, has a lot to do with protecting the line and the knot from breaking. So as long as you're keeping your rod tip up a little bit to where the fish can work against the tip, you're halfway home. The other thing, and I've talked about this in a different video, is that you need to set the drag on your reel to about one half the breaking strength of your line. That way, it's never going to be stressed to the point of breaking. So even for the cruddy little clinch knot down here, if I've got my drag set at one half of 20 pounds, the knot's going to be more robust and will hold up to do that. Well, so now the other thing you can do, of course, is you can increase your line strength. But a, a lot of people don't want to do that because the thicker the line gets, the harder it is to cast, the, the more issues you're going to have with it. So for example, 30 pound power pro, has a thickness of 0 0.11, but if I use 40-pound Arden Gliss, that 40-pound test has the same thickness as the 30-pound Power Pro. And if I go down to 24-pound Arden Gliss, it locks in at 0 .007 thickness, which is about the same as, I think, 10-pound test, so or 15-pound test. So changing the type of line you use, if you don't have a lot of confidence in the particular knot, is going to help mitigate that issue. So I could put my 24-pound Arden Gliss, which I dearly love. This is excellent line. 
you know the only issue with it is it does tend to fray a little bit so you just got to keep checking maybe every trip the the last 10 to 15 feet and make sure that it's still good but I put this on all my reels and I don't worry about breaking I'll set my reel at, on the 24 to 12 pound and then I'll do my clinch knot and I'm still way up above uh, that breaking strength. So the key is, the absolute key is, is you have to know how to tie a knot well. Once you know a knot and you can tie it very well, go ahead and use that lot, knot and then edge your bets with the drag on your reel and making sure that you've got your rod tip where it can play against the fish and take some of the tension off that breaking strength. So I got to get out of here before the guys with the torches show up. But that's my perspective. Doesn't matter. Pick a knot that you know how to use well and go for it. Why bother to tie a complex knot if you don't have confidence in it? What are your thoughts? Am I a heretic? Throw in the comments below. Thanks.